Um, thank you again for everyone being on the call. Um, Senator Davis, you are uh, a panelist on the on the on the convention, so thank you for joining us. You're muted, Senator. Absolutely glad to be with you today. Great. And I'm gonna I want to start out here. I'm gonna have to hop off and go to Wayne, and then come right back to Edgecom. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Senator. Yep. So, so folks, before we get started with our um, convention, I know that um, Madam Chair uh, uh, Johnson and I, like I mentioned earlier, have been preparing uh, a really good convention today. My name is Lorenzo Pedro. I'm the political director for the North Carolina Democratic Party, and I will be assisting the chair um, with the slideshow and the tech um, the tech side of things for this virtual convention, something we've never done um, and something that we are proud of here in North Carolina. We are the, the first state in the, in the nation to do something uh, like this, um, all statewide on the same day. So you are a part of history um, and, and we are doing everything we can to make sure that we are uh, you know, safe and secure during these trying times. And so I ask everyone um, to, to please, you know, relax and have a good time during this county convention and we'll get started. Uh, I know with uh, Chairwoman Johnson in a few minutes, uh, just just a couple of rules before we can before we start. Um, I, I am noticing that some people would like to speak. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, recognize those folks. And if you would like to speak at any time during the convention, um, of course, be, be cognizant of, of the, the convention agenda and when uh, the Madam Chair is speaking. But if you would like to speak and you're on the phone, you can dial star nine. Or if you're on a mobile device, uh, like a laptop, a, uh, an iPad, a tablet, a smartphone, and you're using the Zoom app, you can go to the bottom bar and you can access the um, raise the hand feature and we will be notified as well um, to recognize you. So. Um, before we begin at three o'clock, I'm going to go ahead and um, and allow for Tamika to, to speak. Tamika, are you there? You can unmute yourself. You have your hand raised, Tamika. Oh, Tamisha Patterson. I'm just representing uh, Precinct 12 2 Secretary for today, and I'm glad to be here today. And I hope everything goes successful um, for the convention. Great, thank you, Tamisha. And you said you're the secretary for uh, the precinct, Patterson Twelve Two. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Just so so moderator. Um, I'm I'm going to jump off and head to uh, Wayne, and we'll be back. Thank you, Senator. We'll, we'll thank talk you. To you soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your leadership, and we'll have a great convention today. Thank you, M Mr. Pedro. Yes, Mr. Dancy. I was gonna. I was gonna. Um, have you go next? Okay. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I just want to uh, say that uh, Tamisha Patterson is also the secretary for the Edgecombe County Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, I, 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 think it sounded, I think it sounded like she was, you, when you asked the question, was she the secretary for that precinct? But she's the county secretary. Uh, Madam Chair Johnson? Yes. Uh, just, just so you're aware, you, you are... Um, you recognize that? Uh, yes, that statement. Uh, Tamisha and I have talked earlier, and okay. uh, yes, she is right. the, the county um, secretary for the district. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Tamisha. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. And we'll get started in a couple minutes. I know we have um, more folks joining us, and we're really excited about um, what we have planned for everyone. And uh, just give us a couple more minutes. Mr. We'll moderator, before you go. I, um, why I can't see who's here, I, I see a, a check off here to see who's, um, who's so, who yes. attendees. Let, let, let me clarify, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dancy. Um, we are using a webinar feature for Zoom. Mm -hmm. Usually people have been using the meeting feature, mm -hmm. which lets you see everyone that's in the, um, in the meeting. Um, for the, um, for the webinar feature, only the panelists and the guest speakers like myself, Ms. Johnson, Senator Davis, and, um, and I will go ahead and, and Tamisha, uh, go ahead and add you as a panelist as well. Um, so you can see those folks that are on are able to look at the guests that are attending. That's just a feature that Zoom has. And that's the feature that the state party has asked us to use in order for us to be successful this afternoon. Okay, so how will we know who's um, 
on uh, who, who who the delegates are. I'm I'm just trying to find out who the delegates are. Yes. yes and also, yes, and, and 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 the last thing I'll say before we uh, you, you do what you got to do. I I, I want to clarify. I do know that uh, Tamisha Patterson is the secretary of the of the precinct. But I want to clarify to make sure everyone knew that she was the secretary for the county. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Danson. Okay. We just clarified with Ms. Johnson okay. that uh, she will be the secretary not, uh, for this convention because of her role as being the secretary of the county party. Thank you. Um, and and as, for, as for the members who are attending on the, on the call, um, in a couple of minutes, uh, in about a minute or so, we will do, um, before we, when we get started, I know at some point during the beginning of the convention, Ms. Johnson, the chair of the convention, will be um, doing the roll call. Thank you. Yes. So it is three o'clock. We're going to give it a minute or so, Ms. Johnson, just, just to make sure we got um, some more folks on the call. Uh, I want to thank everyone again, and we'll get started shortly. Okay. Tanisha, can you do me a favor? Can you make sure that you can see my screen? Tanisha? M Madam Chair, do you see my screen now? Yes. I do. Okay, great. So give me a couple seconds and we'll go ahead and um, get the uh, first slide up. Do you see the first slide? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, everyone, we'll get started in a couple more seconds. We're going to wait on a couple more folks, and then we will get started. Madam Chair, if you want to go ahead and get started with the first slide, um, and we can get go ahead and get started if you'd like, Madam Chair. The floor okay. is yours. All right. Uh, we will go to our welcome then. We'll move that up. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martha Johnson, and I am the first vice chair of the Edgecombe County Democratic Party. And I will be serving today as the convention chair for the 2020 Edgecombe County Democratic Party Annual County Convention. This is pursuant to the plan of organization. I will begin with the following statement that they state must be read per the North Carolina Democratic Party's 2020 Delegate Selection Plan. It reads as follows. All public meetings at all levels of the North Carolina Democratic Party shall be open to all members of the Democratic Party, regardless of race, sex, age, color, creed, national origin, religion, ethnic identity, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, economic status or disability. In order that the Democratic Party at all levels be an open party, which includes rather than excludes people from participation, a program of effective affirmative action has been adopted by the North Carolina Democratic Party. Discrimination on the basis of status in the conduct of North Carolina Democratic Party affairs is prohibited. Okay. So at this time, we would like to have a moment of silence as we recognize those from the party, from the Democratic Party that we have lost over the last year, family and friends that we have lost over the last year, and of course, those that we have lost to the coronavirus, um, and which is still going on. So we will have a moment of silence.
okay? At this time, I would like for everyone to um, mute themselves and join me as we state the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, hold on, Ms. Madam Chair. Well, before we continue, let me, let me go ahead and mute everyone, okay? Okay. Give me a second. All right, everyone should be unmuted at this time. So if we let me go back to the screen real quick and we'll and we will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Chair, give me a couple seconds so I can make sure everyone's muted again. Is that okay? That's fine. All right, all right. All right, we can go to the next slide now. Okay. At this time, I would like to summarize or read to you briefly from a message from our state party chair, Mr. Wayne Goodwin. It reads as follows. To my friends and fellow Democrats, as you meet for your county convention, I'm happy to report that the North Carolina Democratic Party is in a strong position to deliver victory for Democrats across our state this November. With your continued passion and support, we are in a great position to push our message out and get as many Democrats elected up and down the ballot. All eyes are on North Carolina. We know that both the White House and the Democratic majority in the U.S. Senate runs through our North Carolina. We're determined to reelect Governor Cooper and win more council of state and statewide judicial races. And once again, we have Democrats running in almost every state Senate and House district, challenging Republicans in areas of this state that in the past general election years, they didn't have to defend. We are setting up an unprecedented campaign to fight for equality, prosperity, and opportunity for all. Together, we are working in every county and zip code for our values. Our best days are ahead, and we've got to work harder than ever and organize from the mountains to the coast. Thank you for all your hard work. Wayne Goodwin, Chair, North Carolina Democratic Party. Great. We'll go to the next slide. Okay. Go ahead, Madam Chair. Okay. At this time, we're going to have a convention overview, so we will we'll know exactly how to be participants uh, in today's convention. And we ask that um, all participants um, mute your com computer microphone computer microphone. That's the first thing that we need for you to do. Um, and this is in order to participate or speak. Okay. So you need to mute your computer microphone, your phone, or other electronic device you are using in order to participate in today's virtual convention. We will be using the raise hand feature today for delegates to indicate their desire to speak, including motions and points of order. If you're using a phone, a phone line, you will raise your hand by using star nine. Okay, are there any questions? Madam Chair, before we proceed, I think might, someone might have practiced on this. Uh, we do have a hand raise. Is it okay if I, uh, if you would like me to go ahead and make sure that person is recognized? Or yes, okay. go ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. we have um, someone who has raised their hand. Um, Galaxy J3 Emerge. It might, it might be the device name. You have the ability to speak now. Okay. 
please, please, please recognize yourself. All right, I'm going to lower the hand just because no one answered the uh, the the call there. Um, all right, Madam Chair, we can proceed. Okay. Let us now review the voting process. Today we will be casting votes via voice vote, and I will ask for unanimous consent. If a request for unanimous, unanimous consent is not objected to, then the item is considered passed. If one person objects to such a request, we will move to a voice vote. We will only move to a vote by ballot using the Google form if there is a call for division. Due to COVID-19, we are conducting today's convention virtually, and we are asking as much... Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Hold on, everyone. Give a couple minutes. Give, give us a couple seconds so we can uh, make sure that Madam Chair Johnson is back with us. Okay. Okay, Miss Johnson, are you there? I'm here. Okay. We. I think we dropped you. Can you start where you said due to COVID nineteen, please? Okay. Sure. Due to COVID nineteen, we are conducting today's convention virtually, and we are asking as much cooperation as possible. If we have division, we will extend the length of the convention, a ballot vote will be required, and more staff will be needed to tally the vote. Therefore, I am asking you to help me and to help us to get through this convention by cooperating as much as practical. As chair, my preference is to handle today's conference mainly by consensus via voice vote. The purpose of today's convention is only to conduct the business outline in the plan of organization and nothing else. Okay, let me get to the next slide. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we will now move forward with the roll call of precincts. When I call your precinct, please indicate. Madam Chair, I think we lost you again. Yes. Madam Chair, can you go ahead and begin again? How's everybody doing today? Um, welcome to the county convention. I'm so excited to be with you on the line today. And um, to Chairman Martin, I want to thank you Senator and to Senator all Davis. the officers Sen and everyone who... So, sorry about that, everyone. I think Senator Davis was in two places at the same time. I, I apologize for that. Um, Miss uh, Madam Chair Johnson, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. All right. I think you dropped us again. So um, can you start again where, uh, at the beginning of the quorum slide, please? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you can see on the screen, a quorum is met when you have 50% plus one of organized precincts represented. We will move forward with the roll call of precincts. When I call your precinct, Please indicate you are present by using the raise hand feature. If you're on a phone line, you will do this by pressing star now. After roll call is completed, we will look to see if we have a quorum. So I will start roll call for the precincts at this time. Okay. One one Edgecombe County Administration Building. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna identify that person, Madam Chair, so they can let us know who that is. Okay. 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 Uh, Harris, can you identify your full name and the 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 precinct? Harris, uh, I think it might be Vi Viola, maybe. Yes. Okay, great. Th there's that precinct, Madam Chair. So you can go to the next precinct. Okay. One, two, Tarboro, Church of God. Okay. We have uh, Mr. Ray Raymond Pivot. Mr. Pivot, you can speak. Can you identify yourself? Can you unmute yourself first, sir? Yes, this is Raymond Pivot. What, 
precinct, sir? One, two. Great. Thank you so much. All right. And then precinct. I'm going to go ahead. Next, next precinct, Madam Chair. One, three, Braswell Recreation Center. Can you repeat the precinct again, Madam Chair? One, three, Braswell Recreation Center. Now, if you are in that precinct, you will raise your hand or dial star nine. All right, we have someone, Madam Chair. I'm going to unmute that person so that they can identify themselves. Okay. And that person and the phone number ends with 1979. You are permitted to speak now. Carol Allen White. Okay. Thank you, Carol. And, and that's, you. that is your precinct, correct? Correct. All right. Three. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, next next precinct. Hello. Yes, Madam Chair, the next okay. precinct. Okay, one four, C B Martin. All right, I think we have someone here. We, we will go with this person right here who has raised their hand first, uh, Mr. Roy Gray. Can you identify yourself? Okay, we'll go to the next person that raised their hand. Uh, uh, Donna, 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 sorry, I can't pronounce that. Donna Seen Vandelli. Yes, and that is your precinct? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, and I, I'm just to verify before we go to the next precinct, Linda Goins, um, is it, was that your precinct as well? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We'll go ahead and um, lower all hands since we got that precinct there. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, how many precincts are there already? Um, well, we're, we're, we still have a lot ways to go. How many um, have you gone through already? We have done down to one four. No. Okay. Okay. Great. So we'll go to the next precinct. Go ahead. Which is two one Canedo. Now, if you are on that precinct, dial star nine if you're calling from your phone or your landline. And if you are joining us, you can um, click the uh, click the raise the hand option at the bottom of the screen. All right, we have someone here, Madam Chair, Mr. Dancy. Can you, uh, is that your precinct, sir? No, it's not. Mr. Dancy? No, it's not. Okay, would you like to speak to the body? No, I'm level one. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, you just raised your hand. I'm going to uh, uh, lower your hand then. Okay, the next precinct is 3 1 speed. If you are on that precinct, I'm going to identify uh, yourself by allowing you to speak. The first person that uh, raised their hand. Ends with the number 6360. Can you please identify yourself for the chair and the secretary, please? The last the last number of the phone number, um, three, sorry, 6360. Can you identify yourself? All right, I'm going to lower that hand. Um, but before I do that, can I check... With uh, three, uh, if your phone number ends with four five zero four, can you please identify yourself? That would be Ethel Collier. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next precinct is four one Lawrence. Okay, if you are in four one Lawrence, please okay. identify yourself. By I did earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. know where you got that number from. You got. Okay, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, we have that precinct. Okay. One. Five one legged. Folks, if if you are if you are not um, if you don't want to be recognized to speak, please mute yourself. Madam Chair, can you repeat the precinct one more time? Five one legged. Thank you. 
six one Whitakers. Okay, we have someone there. Um, I'm going to unmute them. If your phone number ends with 1145, you can proceed to speak and identify yourself. Yes, this is Doris Howington. Madam Chair and Madam Secretary, can you record that, please? Yes, Doris Howington for 61 Whitakers. Okay, I'm going to lower that hand there. Madam Chair, next uh, next precinct. 7-1, Bountiful a few more seconds. Can you repeat the precinct one more time, Madam Chair? 7-1, Battleboro. All right, we have someone. Uh, can you uh, please identify yourself? Um, I'm going to unmute you. Hold on. Uh, go ahead. 1145, last four digits. If your number is 252-437-1145, can you, you, you're able to speak. All right. That was Whitaker's. I just spoke. Okay. Uh, the reason I, I, was, uh, I was asking for you is you're, you, rose, you raised your hand. So I'm gonna, was that your precinct or no? No, I okay. was Whitaker's, not okay. Bottle Burr. Great. Okay, thank you. Hold on. I'm going to get to the next person. Okay, the next one is... Wait, 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 wait Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, hold on. Madam Chair, well, we still haven't identified someone from that precinct. Hold, hold on. Okay. All right. Uh, if your phone number ends... Miss, oh, hold on. If your phone number ends with uh, 1065, can you identify yourself, please? Jacqueline King. And are you a precinct um, a member of that precinct? That, okay. Yes, yeah, seven one. Was that it, Madam Chair, the precinct? That office? is correct. That is correct. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, Mr. Dancy, I've noticed that your hand is raised. Uh, would you like to speak, sir? I keep lowering my hand. It keeps raising for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, I'm not I'm doing sorry. that. Okay. All right. All right. The, um, I'm, the next precinct, Madam Chair. 8-1 Old Sparta. Mr. Dancy, do you mind lowering your hand, sir? 8-1, Old Sparta. And I'm from 8-1, so I'll, I'll raise my hand. Okay, next precinct, Madam Chair. 9-1, Macclesfield. Now, if you if you are from the precinct that the chair is uh, identified, please dial star nine if you're calling from um, your phone. If you dialed in, or if you're using a landline. Now, if you're using a tablet like an iPad or your or your computer or a desktop or a laptop, there is a bar at the bottom of your screen that lets you identify yourself by clicking the button "Raise Your Hand." It's the "Raise a Hand" feature. We'll like, we'll we'll be able to identify your, uh, you you, uh, and we can um, we. Can identify you and let you speak. All right, we have one person, Madam Chair. And I'm going to um, let that person speak. And your okay. phone number ends with 3584. Go ahead. Yes, this is uh, J. O. Williams. I'm precinct one two. I've been trying to uh, get in, and uh, the first time I've gotten through there. Great. Thank you for joining us, Madam Chair. Have you already called that precinct? Yes. Okay. It was at the, at the top. Uh huh. Okay. One two. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Go ahead. I think, okay, we are now at 10 1 Pine Tops. You didn't finish 9 1. You didn't have anyone to. to is there anyone from 9 1 Macclesfield? Hello? No, Madam Chair, there's no one that's identified themselves for that precinct. Okay, so we move to 10-1 Pine Tops. We have one person, Madam Chair, let me identify them, okay? okay. If your phone number ends with 1368, your hand is raised. You, you can speak. Um, Marsha Cooper for 10-1. Thank you, Marsha. 
That was the one, right, Madam Chair? Yes, 10-1. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next next precinct? 11-1, Lewis Fire Department. Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Dancing? Is, is that you? Yes, Camilla. Is that your precinct? Level one, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. 12-1, Johnson School. Okay. Is that uh, Representative Willingham? Is that your precinct, sir? You have to unmute yourself. Representative Willingham. Uh, Madam Chair. Yeah. Yes, Representative, we can hear you. Hello. Okay. That's Hello. Me. Okay. That is your precinct. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Please, Madam Secretary, Madam Chair, can you record that for the representative? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next precinct. Um, uh, what well, did you try to call me? Community you College, Rock Okay, we have right, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna be murdered um, until they all meet you. Is that Williams? Is that right? You're gonna be murdered. You're gonna be murdered. It is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, Madam Chair. Twelve. But they were telling you how to do that. West you did uh, uh, Star Nine or something. Well, did you do what? Did you do Star Nine or whatever? We have one person. Actually, two. I'm going to go I'm ahead have and to give it to Melanie Bradley. Melanie, until, uh, can you now. identify yourself what and make sure do? that you are uh, when you're a member of that precinct? Okay, just a call back Yes, in. Melanie Goff Bradley, 12-3. You, 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 you can you hear them, right? 12 Okay, but call back in. Parker right, right they can't hear you because they mute you themselves even while I'm up here. They mute us even on the computer, but I can unmute myself. You gotta okay, hit a number sure. uh, to, to is, um, uh, unmute yourself. Um, hold on. Sorry, I, um, Go ahead and identify yourself if you okay. raised your hand. Nehemiah Smith Jr. And you are a member of the precinct, correct? 12 4, yes. All right, thank you. 12. Right, because right, that's, that's what they're going to identify North you North as North 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 by your, your telephone number. So, this is what you need to do. Okay, they, they're gonna, they, they, they're gonna, they're gonna uh, see your phone. But I'm saying, Jordan, can you get back on the yourself, call, please? and I'm gonna tell them, tell y'all what to do to mute your, uh, so you can uh, unmute Jordan, yourself. Can you unmute yourself. But he's been unmuted. If he had stayed up there, he would have unmuted you if he saw that you uh, was from um, that. Jordan. Okay. And is that your precinct? Correct. Twelve five. Okay. Well, let me tell them. What Okay, thank you. Let, let me tell them what they need to do for people on the Madam phone Chair, call. Because um, Reverend J.O. Horn, J.O. Williams did the same thing. He home. said he finally got through. I don't know what he did. Okay. All right, okay. Give okay. a couple more seconds. Okay. All right, Madam Chair. Proceed. No one responded. Wait. Uh, actually, go, yeah, go ahead, Madam Chair. 14-1, Sharpsburg. Can you repeat the precinct again one more time? 14-1, Sharpsburg. There's no one identifying themselves, Madam Chair. Uh, 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 can, you, can you hear me? Yes. I, I hate to interrupt, but I just got a phone call. The people on some people on a cell phone, they are saying they can hear you. They are muted, but they tried to um to uh respond. So maybe okay. you need to announce what they need to do on a cell phone because I don't right. have the okay. information before. So, so let, let me make the announcement again. Thank you again for that, Mr. Dancy, for the clarification there. So folks, if you are are calling from a mobile device like a cell phone or your home landline. Please, we can hear you. I mean, uh, we'll be able to hear you if you do the following. If you please dial star nine, I will be notified on the switchboard to make sure that you are uh, recognized. So um, just as an example, if we go to the next precinct and there's two people who identify themselves from the same precinct, I will, I will pick the first person that I see. And if, if the second person isn't recognized, it's because we fulfilled the the um the, the precinct or the precinct that the madam 
chair um, asked to be represented for the quorum. So uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why we weren't recognize you, recognizing you. But before we uh, proceed to the next item on the agenda, we will go back, um, and Madam Chair, if it's okay with you, to see which, which precincts we did not hear from anyone, and we'll just do a final roll call. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and lower everyone's hand. So star nine, if you would like to be identified, or press the uh, or press the uh, raise the hand feature button at the bottom of your screen. So, Madam Chair, next precinct. That that is all of our precincts. Okay. And how, and how many out of how many out of the uh, out of the of the total? Okay, I wanted um, Tamisha and uh, Miss Viola Harris, who was also acting in the secretary capacity, to give us their totals, please. Tamisha, if you would give us yours first. Tamisha, can you speak, please? I think you're muted. I have fifteen. Okay. And Viola, how many did you? Hold, hold on, Madam Chair. Let me let me get her to a panelist um, so, she, so she can um, let us know. All right, Viola, you should be muted, unmuted now. Viola, proceed. Viola? Hold on, let me, let me see if we got her. All right, Viola, can you hear me? Viola. Okay. okay. Um, so that so that we can go uh, move along, I also counted up fifteen. Okay. So, Great. So, Madam Chair, it looks like you do have quorum. Yes. Um, we a quorum quorum would be fifty percent plus one of organized precincts. So we have twenty one precincts. Therefore, we would need twelve um precincts in order to have a quorum. And um, gratefully, we have 12 precincts present and I therefore declare that we do have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, my, okay. All right, at this time, uh, we will proceed to today's agenda. And um, so let us proceed with the passage of today's agenda. Are there any proposed amendments to the agenda? Madam Chair, before, uh, before we uh, get some folks to speak, uh, maybe for the, for the folks that don't see the screen, can you go over the, 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 um, the agenda real quick? Sure. On the agenda for today's convention, we have the welcome and call to order, which we've done, the moment of silence, the pledge of allegiance, a message from the state party chair, which we've done, elections, elect delegates to the congressional district convention and state conventions, elect two members of each of the following judicial house and Senate executive committees, other business, announcements, adjournment, and we do have a special guest uh, and videos, the statewide candidate videos, and our very John Davis. Okay, Madam Chair, there are two individuals that would like to speak. Would you like me to go ahead and unmute them? Yes. Okay. So if uh, uh, if you raise your hand, you can speak, um, uh, Vendelli. <laughs> Um, I'm just a little confused because Tanisha said we had 15 and then Martha said we had 12. Does that mean? No, no, I said we had 15. But you said we have a quorum, we have 12. So 15 is the number we were looking for, correct? No. As long as we have 12 precincts present, we oh. have met our quorum. Oh, but we had okay. more than two. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you for the question. And we have one more individual. If your phone number ends with the number, uh, well, I just unmuted you. I just lost number. But if you if you uh, go ahead and recognize yourself. Okay, Madam Chair, you can proceed. Okay. So if uh, if it is without objection, 
then we will approve our agenda and um, we will go from there. Um, so we will approve our agenda by a voice vote of yes or aye. So let, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, let me, Madam Chair, yeah. let, let, let me unmute everyone first, and then that way we can uh, we can make sure that everyone uh, was uh, present. Hold this on. is time that for us to continue to work together, Mr. Chair. And I will simply say, to, well, sorry, that is Senator Davis on another one. All right, so Madam Chair, everyone is uh, um, uh, should have their phone uh, unmuted. Okay. All right, so we will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. And if um, if there are no objections, we will go forward with this, uh, with approval of this agenda. And um, if there are none that oppose it, we will signal approval by saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Okay. Are there aye, any aye, that oppose? Aye. Are there any that oppose? Say nay. The ayes have it and the agenda is approved. Thank you so much. Yeah, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Madam Chair, give me a quick second to pull back to the screen. Excuse me? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna unmute I'm gonna mute everyone and then we'll get back to the screen. Hold on just one sec. Okay. Quick second. All right, can you see my screen or not yet? Not yet. Okay, hold on. Give me another second. And we'll get started. Thank you, everyone, for being patient. All right, can you see my screen now? Yes. All right, let me, let me make it bigger for us. All right? Yes. Go. All right, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So if it is without objection, I would like to appoint Viola Harris to work with Tamisha Patterson today uh, in order to record the minutes for our convention. And also, I would also like to appoint Raymond Privet as our parliamentarian. Is there any objections? If there are no objections, we shall move forward. I raise Hold my on. hand. Hold on, Madam Chair. I think Mr. Dancy would like to speak. Yes. I would like to know uh, what the purpose of uh, Viola uh, being the secretary uh, when we have a secretary on the line, on the call. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I stated was that Viola Harris would work with Tamisha Patterson to record the minutes for today. And the reason behind that is because Tamisha has indicated that this is really her first meeting for the Edgecombe County Democratic Party. So we just want to make sure with this new process that we're doing that we have all the minutes and everything recorded accurately. And we're gonna to work together so that she can get um, some insight from someone because Viola has done this. She has been secretary for the party many times in the past. So she has a lot of insight that she can share with Tamisha, and she can also present this service to the party. Anything else, Mr. Dancy, before I lower your hand? No, I, I'll address that later, not, not today. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and just um, so that everyone will know, Robert's Rules of Order is our parliamentarian authority, which we will use for today's convention, okay? So we don't have any um, special rules for today, but we will be using Robert's Rules of Order and the North Carolina Democratic Party's plan of organization. Madam Chair, before we get to the next slide, I do see that Mr. Dancy has his hand raised again. Oh, um, no, no, I'm sorry. I thought I hit it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next All slide. Right. Yes, next one. All right, so therefore it brings us to the elections. And um, before we go into the elections, we do have one resolution on the agenda, and it is a resolution on the election of the district 
and state convention delegates. It reads as follows. Whereas Democrats in Edgecombe County met in a virtual convention on April the 25th, 2020, pursuant to guidance from the State Executive Council, and whereas Democrats in Edgecombe County desire to have full representation of 54 delegates at the upcoming Congressional District Convention and 54 delegates to the upcoming uh, state conventions in May and June, respectively, be it resolved those registered delegates at today's county convention shall be elected delegates to the congressional district and state convention and be it further resolved that the first vice chair of the Edgecombe County Democratic Party shall be authorized to appoint the remaining balance of delegates and be it further resolved that the first vice chair shall use the following sources of information to make decision about delegate appointments. That will be individuals from who have filed a notice of candidacy seeking election as the national convention delegate, county members of the state executive committee, county executive committee members, and elected officials residing in Edgecombe County. Individuals from who, who have expressed an interest in serving as a state or district convention delegate in advance of the county convention. If there is no objection, then um, we will approve this resolution. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. there is one person who has identified themselves on in the call. I will identify, I, I will unmute them if that's okay with you. That is good. Mm -hmm. All right, if your phone number ends with the numbers 3584, you, um, you are on the line. Uh, Madam Chair, this is J.O. William, Precinct 1-2. I've moved the um, resolution. Okay. That we approve the resolution. That, that is one, Madam Chair. There's several other several other hands up in the air, if that's okay with you. That is okay. Okay. So let me lower that person's hand real quick. But there is a motion there. Um, Mr. Uh, Roy Gray, you can speak now. If you unmute yourself. Roy, can you unmute yourself, please? Um, final call, Roy, can you unmute yourself? All right, I'm gonna lower the hand. The last person that I have here um, raising their hand, actually there's two. I saw Sarah Peebler. Sarah? Sarah, you can you unmute, uh, unmute yourself? There you go. Yes, thank you. My question, do we have to have filed in advance to be nominated uh, to the state convention? Is that how this is working? Okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not clear. Madam Chair. Okay. How it's working, um, Ms. Peebler, is that all the people that have registered for the convention and that's present at the convention today will be deemed delegates for the district and the state convention. Okay. This is not this is not unusual because this is what we have done at past conventions. Correct. We okay. have um yeah we have uh, been allotted fifty four uh, slots or fifty four delegate slots to the district and the state convention. So it's going to take everybody that's been registered today and some more in order for us to reach that 54 delegate count. If, uh, you know, we have to, if we don't get to that point, then our voting strength at the district and at the state level will be reduced to however many delegates we have. Okay, there was, I just was not clear mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the resolution, how that was going to work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Martha, very much. You're welcome. All right, Madam Chair, we have several other folks. Thank you for that, Sarah. Um, Roy, I'm going to try you again. Um, go ahead and speak. All right, I'm not hearing anything from Roy again, so I'm going to lower the hand there. Mr. Dancy, go ahead. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, I think where the um, confusion is, when you meet and have the convention, 
you normally just elect delegates. It's not done as a resolution. So only thing you're trying to do is make sure you get enough delegates for the district and the um and the state. That's it. That is correct. Madam Chair, um, would you like yes. to get to the next person? Yes, thank yes. Uh-huh. Thank you, Butch. All right. All right. Uh Roy Gray, I'm gonna try you one more time. I'm being I'm being very gracious here. Um you can speak. Again, uh, um, uh, maybe they on a, a phone and don't know how to do it. You might want to announce that again. No, it, it says that he's unmuted, but oh, for okay. some reason he's not coming through. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Gray, you might have, if you're calling from your, your cell phone, you might be um, muted manually on your device. So if you, unma if you manually unmute yourself, you'll be able to, to speak if that's the case. Okay, Madam Chair, I'm going to lower his hand again just because we don't hear anything. Um, okay. We have one more hand um, raised, and that is from the person that ends with uh, phone number 9250. You can speak to the body. Uh, yes, this is Margaret Knight and retired Sheriff James Knight, and I just wanted to let you know that I um, signed into the convention, and I was trying to speak for 8-1, but I was muted and could not speak, but... Um, Thank you that I'm unmuted now. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I will I will be very kind again and give Roy Gray the opportunity to speak, if that's okay with you. That's fine. All right, Mr. Gray, can you hear us? And, and you, you are live. I'm not hearing anything again, so I'm going to lower the hand. Uh, okay. Representative Willingham, you can speak, sir. Yes, I, I, I just want to second the motion. <laughs> To move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's where we were going. We was going to ask for a second. Um, is there any debate? If there is none and all is in favor, please signal by saying aye. So would you unmute everybody so we can. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Hold, hold on, Madam Chair. And let me get that ready for everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone should be unmuted at this oh, point. Damn. All right, ma'am. Bye. Are those that are opposed say nay? The eyes have it and the resolution is approved. Okay. Thank you Madam, so much. Madam Chair, give me a quick second and we can get back to the screen. Give me a quick second. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna mute everyone first. Except the chair. A second, everyone. Everyone, all right? Okay. Quick second. It seems like everyone, folks. If you if you don't mind muting yourself manually, that would be great. I'm going to mute everyone again. Hold on. All right. Madam Chair, you should be unmuted as well. And I'm okay. going to unmute Tamisha and Ms. Harris. Okay. And hold on just one second, and we'll get started All with right. the presentation one more time. I apologize for that. This is a learning process for everyone. All right. And all right, we should, we should have uh, the next slide. Okay. Okay. We will now move to the election of members to the Judicial Executive Committee. We will elect two members. The nominees are before you. The nominees were considered based upon their experience in this area, knowledge base in this area, and um, other information. So that's how they were chosen. This is your proposed slate. Are there any additional nominees? Madam Chair, just, just for, for everyone that's not seeing the screen, mm -hmm. could you please identify those, those candidates? Okay. The proposed slate of names for the Judicial Executive Committee is Raymond Privet and Carol A. White. Are there any additional nominees? Madam, Madam Chair, I, I'm going to go ahead and I need two people that have their hand raised. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dancy, can you please uh, speak to the body? 
Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Payne. Okay. All right. Um, I want to make, for the record, I, I, I want to make it clear that I have no problem with the two names. However, um, I think it should have been ran by all the delegates to see if we wanted to be nominated uh, for this. So in the future, for the record, uh, by me being a precinct chair, how about let me know uh, um, um, when we're going to make these appointments because I, I may have been interested. So I'm just saying for the record, I have no problem with these two names, but I do have a problem with me not being notified. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Madam Chair, uh, that's that's the first person um, that raised their hand. Uh, Mr. Privet also uh, has a, a question or an inquiry. So Mr. Privet, you can go ahead and speak. Yes, sir. My, I, I don't have a question about this. Roy Gray telephoned me and said that he has been trying to get in unsuccessfully. I asked if his phone was muted, and he says he's not on a phone, so he is and has been trying to get in. That's can, my can, Mr. Perfect, thank you for that. Do you know if he's on the computer? He said he is on a computer. Okay. It might be his microphone that we're unable to, to identify. It might be a setting on his computer. Uh, if you don't mind relaying the message, sir... I think the, in, in, in order for us to be uh, proceed with the agenda, um, if it's okay with you, Madam Chair, to give the recommendation to have him call the line. Yes, that's fine. I, I will ask him to call the line. That, that way we know that he's on the line. I will. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, you may proceed. Okay. Here are no additional nominees. And if, if, it is, if it is without objection, we will close the floor to the nomination and we will receive those nominated by acclamation. Okay, we now move to a um, move on. Uh, and these are our nominees for the Judicial Executive Committee. And um, that slate will consist of Raymond Privet and Carol White. Okay. Right, Madam Chair, before we continue, Mr. Dancy has another inquiry. Do you mind? Yes, I would like to see us, uh, since we're saying we're following Robert Rules of Order, to carry out the motion properly and not how it's being done. Thank you. Do I have a motion from the floor that we accept the proposed slate as listed for the Judicial Executive Committee? Could you go back, please? Yeah, yes, for, for the judicial. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a second. All right, let me let me go back to that. I'm sorry. All right, and we have several folks who have raised their hand. Um, the first hand that I saw was Margaret Knights. Can you please uh, uh, identify yourself? Can you please unmute yourself first? You must unmute your stage. Okay, you I've done it. Okay, um, this is Margaret Knight from Precinct Eight One. And I make a motion that we accept the slate that has been presented. If I could get a second. Thank you that, for that, Madam. Uh, uh, Miss Knight, I'm, I'm going to lower your hand. And then, Madam Chair, I have two other hands raised. Would you, do you mind me answering those? Answer those. Okay. If your phone for number, a second. Okay. If your phone number ends with 3584, you may proceed with speaking to the body. Uh, Madam Chair James O. Williams, I uh, second the motion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Williams. The motion has been pro properly moved and second, so therefore we will move forward. Uh, and all those in favor, use the voting sign. Aye. Let's vote. Aye. 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 Uh, we have to be smart on how we do it. Um, I would like to see as we move forward a lot of a little more. Aye. All those opposed? So the ayes have it. So our slate for the Judicial Executive Committee shall be Raymond Privet and Carol Allen White. We will now move to the election of members to the Senate Executive Committee, and we will elect two members for that. Our proposed slate for this is Shelly Willingham and Martha Johnson. Um, are there any additional nominees? Madam Chair, I, 
there is someone on the phone. Can I recognize that individual? Um. Hello? Madam hey. Chair? Yes. Nine, if your phone number ends with 1979, you may proceed. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you could remind everybody that they need to mute their phone if they're not speaking. Yes, Madam Chair, Goodbye. give me a second. Madam Chair, give me a second and I'll do that for everyone. Hold on just mm -hmm. one second. All right. All right. All right. Madam Chair, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, let me share my screen once more and then we'll get started again. I'm sorry, folks, again, this, this is what happens when we uh, do everything in virtually. All right, Madam Chair, go ahead. Okay. Uh, are there any additional nominees? If there are no additional nominees, I need a motion from the floor that we accept the slate as proposed. Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Dancy has expressed interest to, to speak to the body. Okay. Mr. Dancy? Are we on the state executive committee? Yes. No. Okay. On the Senate, Senate executive committee. Sir. Right, I mean the Senate executive committee. Again, I have no problem. Well, I do. Um, I do have a problem with uh, Martha Johnson. Uh, simply because, like I said, I have not been given the opportunity to um, to um, uh, be nominated. Again, um, I go along with it today, but in the future, I hope this will not happen again because we have active precincts, uh, uh, active uh, Democrats in the county are very active, and we were not given the opportunity to uh, be nominated. Thank you. For the record. Okay, we have received that for the record. Are there any other additional nominees? Madam, if not, I, could I have a motion from the floor? Madam Chair, there's two individuals that would like to speak first. I'm going to unmute Mr. Roy Gray. Maybe this... Okay. Mr. Gray, can you hear us, please? Mr. Gray? Again, um, Madam Chair, I do not... I'm not getting any feedback from him, so I'm going to lower his hand. Um, if, if someone has uh, Mr. Gray's phone number, uh, please let him know that we can see that he's on the line, and I'm sure he's looking at the presentation and hearing us, but there might be a microphone issue on his end where we're not able to, to, to hear from him. So I'm going to lower his hand. Uh, Mr. Dancy, go ahead. Yes, again, uh, for the record, um, someone just texted me, and uh, for the record, uh, uh, they wanted to know why. how did uh, Martha... Um, nominate herself. Just for the record, you can move on. Madam Chair, would you like to proceed or, or, or whatever you, you would like to do there? Uh, we will proceed uh, with the proposed slate and um, my number is 8230268 so, um, so that we can move on with this convention and um, you know go ahead with convention business uh, since there was no objections, uh, if I could get a motion from the floor that we accept the proposed Madam, slate. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Representative Willingham would like to speak. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Representative. Okay, I, I just want to say that uh, if there's someone that wants to nominate themselves uh, to serve uh, in my state, then I'll gladly step down. That's not a problem. Uh, so if, if, if there's someone who who wants to serve, then I'll certainly uh, uh, step back and let them do that. Ma Madam Chair, um, after Representative Willingham's um, comment there, we have someone on the line. Can I answer the line for them? Sure. All right. The next person to speak is Mr. Raymond Privet. Mr. Privet, you should uh, be unmuted. Yes, Madam Chair, I just received a call from Mr. Dwight Gray. Mr. Gray's question is, uh, well, his first statement was that he thought he was still on the Senate Executive Committee and would like to continue. Uh, his question was, how did he uh, get removed? Okay. Um, he was removed because it's election time again, and he did not present uh, his name or indi make any indication that he wanted to still be considered for the Senate Executive Committee. Um, you know, I'll kind of say this. 
you know, some of us have been around for a very long time, so we know what the process is. And so, you know, if if you want it to be considered, you know, uh, there was every indication that we were going to have to do this vote today. So it, it's just that it's an election time. That's it. That's it. And we don't have the information from from the past, but either way around, it's still election time. So... That was just it. Can I get a motion from the floor that the slate be accepted? Matt, Madam Chair, we have someone else on, on the on the line if you want me to recognize them. Uh, let's see what their purpose for recognition is. Mr. Dancy, go ahead. Yes, um, I, I'm not trying to prolong it, and I've been around longer than most of the people on this, um, uh, uh, on, on the call probably. I, um, I am like Roy Gray. Uh, he was on the committee. And, 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 and go back and clarify something. Um, we were, we, when you made the phone calls, you should have mentioned to the folk about these committees. Nobody has looked at the plan of organization. I'm familiar with it, but nobody has looked at the plan of organization to see what was going on during this convention. So when you called around, when you, you have spoken to me three times, and then this morning is when you mentioned to me about you had a slate of names. You didn't mention to me who they were, and I, and I, emailed, I emailed and, and, and texted you and asked you who they were. You did not respond. So, again, if, uh, uh, I would love to see uh, uh, Roy Gray continue. Uh, Shelly Willingham, Representative Shelly Willingham said he would be glad to step down. He's already an uh, elected official. So uh, if he's willing to step down, then I nominate Roy Gray to continue. The same would have applied for the right, other ones. And, and, and that's it. That's all you had to do. We called for nominations, you know, a few minutes ago. So, you know, if that's what you want to do, you know, you can make that nomination. Would you like to go back and kind of put it in a little better order? Just make your nominate, uh, nomination. I just, uh, I just, uh, you, you, you're uh, moderating uh, it, so you, 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 you do what you need to do. And Shelly Willingham said that he was willing to step down, I, 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 I remove his name, and I said what I said, so fix it up ever how you want to do it. You are moderating to me. Matt, Matt, Madam Chair, Representative Willingham would like to speak. Go ahead, Representative. Sure. Yes, uh, uh, at this point, I, I would certainly like to uh, step down and also, uh, Nominate Roy Gray to continue to serve on the uh, Senate Executive Committee. Okay. okay. Thank you, thank you, uh, Representative Willingham. And that's all we had to do is to get a nomination in place. A nomination has been put on the floor with two names being proposed: uh, Roy Gray and Martha Johnson. Can I get a motion, please, to close out this nomination? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, before before you do that, I do have two two inquiries still left. Would you like me to proceed there? Uh, let's see the purpose of the no, so, so there is someone uh, Ms. Ms. Bradley has has nominated Cornelius Dancy to the Senate Executive Committee um, Ms. Ms. Bradley would you like to speak to that or or um... yes thank you um, I felt that Mr. Dancy was asking to be nominated and he did not nominate himself so I uh, have nominated uh, Camilla Stancy to the Senate Executive Committee. I, 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 I declined. Uh, I was not trying to get nominated. I just want to make sure that anybody that's on the call that's interested, I would love to serve, but not today. I appreciate you nominating me. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Madam Chair, Ma Madam Chair, Mr. Dancy, do you have something else before we proceed? No. Uh, no, okay. no, no. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, be before that as well, like I mentioned, there was one more person. Ms. Vandelli, you may speak, please. Uh, I'd like to second for Roy Gray. Okay. Madam Thank Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, can we get the motion um, so that we can um, move on? That we um, close out with this proposed slate of names. Mr. Pivot, Mr. Pivot, you can go. Madam Chair, I make the motion. I would like to motion that we accept the exec the slate of Roy Gray and Martha Johnson for the Senate Executive Committee. Could I get a second, please? Could I get a second? M Madam Chair, hold on just one second. You do have Miss Vandelli. Uh, 
I would like to second. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it has been properly moved and second. Um, if we can bring this to the floor and all those in favor of the proposed slate, will you um, vote by using the word I? If you could unmute everybody. Yes, ma'am. Everyone's unmuted. Okay. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And those that oppose? Nate and only uh, 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 okay. the uh, that's Martha a, Johnson. That's a voice vote. That's all we need is a voice vote. Okay, the eyes have it, so this later name will be presented as the <laughs> executive committee people for Escom County. And Madam Chair, before we continue, let me make that edit so that will read uh, Roy Gray and Martha Johnson. Give me a exactly. second. Mm -hmm. And uh, please, uh, the secretaries also make sure that they have that on the record. Um, okay. And so I'm going to share my screen again. But before that, I'm going to mute everyone again. Thank you. All right, Ms. Johnson, you should be unmuted. And, and both uh, Tamisha and, and Viola, you should be unmuted as well at this time. Before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again so we can proceed. <laughs> okay. And let me present this, and then it says, that's how it says, right there. No, no, go, oh yeah, that is correct. That is correct, Slate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, moving, now we will move to the House Executive Committee. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We will now elect two members to the Judicial Executive so, Committee. The House. The House. House excuse me to the House Executive Committee. And the nominees are before you, Reverend Richard Joyner and Gladys Shelton. Are there any additional nominees? No one on the, on the line, Madam Chair. If there is no objection, we will close the floor to nominations. And if, if it is no other nominees, we will have a motion to accept the two names as proposed on this slate as the House Executive Committee. Could I get a motion from the floor? All right, we have I to make a motion that we accept the proposed slates for House Executive Committee. Tanisha Thank Patterson. You. Thank you, Tanisha. Could I get a second? We have one for Miss Margaret Knight. Okay. Um, this Ms. is Margaret Knight. I second the motion. Okay. The motion has been properly moved and second. At this time, will you unmute everyone so that we can have a those that approve the proposed slate of name use the voice vote of I. Aye. 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 And those opposed, use mm. the voice vote of nay. Nay, Camilla's dancing. Okay. Please take level one. The eyes have it. Okay. Here, no. Um, we will now move to um, the acceptance of the proposed slate of Reverend Richard Joyner and Gladys Shelton for our House Executive Committee. Thank you all so much for your participation getting through those elections. Um, now, uh, Madam Chair, let me share my screen one more time. Okay. All right, we should we should be set. Okay. All right. Is there any other business to come before the convention at this time? Is Madam there Chair. anyone that has any resolutions Madam that need to be moved forward to the state? Madam Chair, Mr. Dancy would like to speak. Yes, okay. I would like to know how do you plan to uh, move forward or whomever, uh, especially the three uh, vice chairs and, 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 and we know the chair out there somewhere. How do you plan on communicating with the rest of us, uh, Edgecombe County Democrats, after this meeting? Because we need to come together um, and, and have some phone calls, conference calles, or whatever, so we can be abreast of what's going on with the Democratic Party and the elections to come. We cannot continue not having any meetings. So ever how it needs to be done, um, especially you uh, county officers, which consist of the chair and the three vice chairs, the secretary and the treasurer, 
you need to have county meetings if y'all you all need to come together at, like you're supposed to and, and then reach out to us so i'm looking forward okay. to uh, 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 okay. uh our democrats in edgecombe county to become active and some guidance that we have been lacking and okay. i'll address All that right. later thank you okay thank you Thank you, Mr. Dancy. Your comments will be duly noted. Um, Madam Chair, there's there's two other folks. Uh, okay. one, one more person. Uh, okay. Mr. Jordan, you are able to speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Jordan, you have to unmute yourself first. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, for other business, I would like to propose for Precinct 12-5 uh, to request to the county board of election, the Hitchcock County Board of Election, that uh, the voting place be moved from uh, North End Baptist Church. And the reason being, there has been inconvenient, there's been members in the precinct who have voiced uh, problems with that location. And we have an ideal location, which is uh, at the Rocky Mount Senior Citizen Center at the Rocky Mount Recreation Center at 747 Pennsylvania Avenue, the ground floor. And so we would like to propose to the uh, County Board of Elections that the uh, polling place be moved there, the, the reason for that is it's such a much better place. It has an area for, it's larger, and if the weather is bad, if it's raining, there is a place where if, a, if it happens to be a line, they could uh, be on the inside of the building. Uh, the parking is better. It's the ideal a location for the handicap for curbside parking. It has every advantage that is needed and it meets all the requirements for a polling place. It's a uh, city owned property, a government owned property, and that could serve as a basis for a permanent polling place because we have been moving around from place to place we had a permanent place that was pretty permanent when O.R. Pope School was uh, operating. But since the school has closed down and they moved it to North End Baptist Church, uh, the, so that seems like a temporary place. But if we were to move to the uh, recreation center, uh, okay. and it is available, Okay. Okay. Mr. Jordan, um, I will get with you after this convention and we will note the proper um, authorities or the people that we need to talk with in regards to that issue. But um, it's not anything that we can do at, at this convention on this day. Okay. I, I'm not. I will get with you. I will get with you after the convention. Okay. I'm just per, per, presenting that as a proposal. I wasn't expecting you know, a vote on it or anything. Okay. Okay. It to be done. I, that's what I said. It's, it's for, just to okay. notify. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Jordan. Um, we have someone else, Madam Chair, if you would like to go ahead and recognize, we have one more person. Okay. Deborah Jordan, you can speak. You have to unmute yourself first. Deborah Jordan, can you unmute yourself? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to piggyback off what Mr. Dancy stated. And this is directed, you know, to you as well, Mr. Pedro, because in the past we haven't had any uh, significant support. We have reached out to uh, who we need to reach out with our concerns. So I just want to piggyback that I prayerfully hope after today we will have support from this, you all, the state or you, um, with um, addressing the issues that Edgecombe County has expressed prior to this meeting today. Um, and um, especially for guidance uh, going forward. And I want to, you know, say I would love to see 
all of us, 21 precincts, get together and um, collaboratively and get out to vote efforts, meetings. You know, we need to get together. We can no longer uh, be silent and just once a year, maybe get together and to um, push forward the Democrat agenda here in Edgecombe County. So I look forward to seeing some action taken after this meeting. Madam Chair, okay. can, I, can I speak to that, ma'am? Uh, um, Lorenzo, we really need to move on. We will accept that, um, what she stated, uh, and we will put that because, you know. Uh, okay, ma uh, we can proceed, Madam Chair. Act upon today for this convention. Thank you for allowing me to speak. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Uh -huh. All right, um, we we do have one more person, Madam Chair, on the on the line. Okay, uh, Miss Vin Vindelli, go ahead. Yes, I would request that we allow Lorenzo to express what he wanted to to Deborah Jordan. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I can make it quick, Miss Ch Madam Chair, if you'd like. Okay, is it in regards to the? I, 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 all I wanted to say, Madam Chair, if it's okay with you. Uh, the state party has recognized all your comments today, and we will make sure that we uh, we collaborate with our leadership to to ensure that we are in great partnership uh, for November. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I appreciate okay. that. Okay. I just want I just want some ongoing communication, some efforts being seen. You know, we are all willing to work to push forward uh, democratic. Um, way here in Edgecombe County and I just want to you know know today or just note today have it noted today that I'm expecting some action okay that's all Madam Chair we can proceed <clears throat> seeing there is no other business to come before the convention we will now proceed with our announcements and directly after our announcements we will see if our speaker is going to be available but our announcements are as follows. So Saturday, May the 16th, we will have our district conventions. On Saturday, June the 6th, we will have our North Carolina Democratic Party State Convention. Uh, the State Executive Committee is to be announced. And on Tuesday, November the 3rd, is Election Day. Okay, that brings us to our speaker who is standing by and ready. He is the chair. He is Senator Don Davis. He is our, our District 1. He is a friend of the Edgecombe County Democrats because he has so willingly stepped forward so many times before to try to assist us with this process. We all are very glad to have him with us today in this virtual convention. And if y'all could give me a hand clap, or if you could unmute it so we could get a hand clap in here. Lorenzo, I present to you none other than our very own Senator Don Davis. Go ahead, Senator. <laughs> well, y'all have a way of making a person feel special. Hold on one second. Hold on. Oh. All right, go ahead, Senator. No, okay. Good. It's so good to be with each and every one of you today. And I want to thank you for taking the time, making the time to come and engage in the work of the Democratic Party. Now, with that being said, I think we all know sometimes as Democrats, we um, have different thoughts, different opinions. Um, this is part of the, the process, the Democratic process. But what I will say today is, first and foremost, I pray that everyone uh, remains safe with this global pandemic that's before us. Um, this is serious. It's real. Um, when I look across um, eastern North Carolina and even in Edgecombe County, uh, there remain a lot of active cases of COVID-19 that's still um, within our communities. And North Carolina has been identified as a state of transmission. Um, so we must remain safe. 
And that was a large part of what we're doing, not only here in Edgecombe County with virtual conventions, um, but you've seen this now across the state of North Carolina. It is important as we uh, remain under the governor's um, executive order in this state of emergency um, to continue to take care of one another. And while you hear so often about social distancing, let's reframe that and say physical distance while we keep our physical distance from each other. And this is a time now more than ever that we actually should um, become closer with one another and socially connect with one another. You know, reach out to your neighbors, friends, um, video chatting with the family. I'm hearing so much more of that. And even with our church services for those of faith. When I think about then what's before us, the fight is not ourselves. The fight is clearly right now in the White House. I believe when we continue to work together, as we unite together, and as we fight together, then we are able to get Democrats elected up and down the ticket. And this is one thing that I have no doubt about it, and that is Edgecombe County is key and is huge in the success of all candidates, especially running statewide and in Eastern North Carolina. So thank you for being on the line today, calling in. Um, I've been actually um, with Edgecombe County most of the day, um, in and out, and that's why I actually had to pause in the beginning um, because um, with this situation, actually I've had a chance to go in and out every convention that's been taking place. And uh, meanwhile, um, I pulled up and I've stayed in tune with Edgecombe County um, in terms of what's going on. I just want to let you know it is important and I do appreciate everyone's cooperation, the spirit of cooperation that's occurred today. So I do thank, um, again, everyone on the line. Let's continue to stay united. Let's continue to stay passionate and let's continue to fight smartly. There are a lot of issues that people are counting on us. We have issues ranging from access to health care to how we better educate our kids. Also, now that's going to be even more um, important to us, you know, how we address our economy in Eastern North Carolina. Before COVID-19, there was already a crisis. And perhaps now this is creating the potential of a greater, greater threat. And what's important for us as we move forward is to stay, stay safe and to prevent the further expansion of any gaps that may exist out there already, especially those in Eastern North Carolina. So as we stay focused on the issues that matter most of us, um, do know that Congressman Butterfield, he's working very hard for us. I've stayed in contact with them, and um, they've done an awesome job at trying to get resources um, into our state. Members of the General Assembly uh, will be heading, um, and I think Representative um, Willingham um, was on earlier. We're heading back to Raleigh on the 28th. Um, right now, we're looking at a COVID-19 package. Um, we're looking at how to keep our st schools running, even though for now, students will not be meeting um, for in-person instruction. So there's a whole lot of work before us. This is the time now, more than ever, that we absolutely must work together. This is a time more than ever because it's during presidential election years, we tend to see the highest levels of turnout. And with this pandemic that's before us, it's gonna make efforts even more challenging. We need all Democrats on board. We need all Democrats working together. And when we work together, and when we get our voters out, we win. So thank you so much, Democrats. I look forward to seeing you at our district convention. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you. All right, Madam Chair, would you like me to proceed with the videos or um, identify the three individuals that are on the line? 
the, the, there's three three individuals that are. Um... Go ahead, Madam Chair. I wanted to thank uh, Senator Davis okay. for being with us today for all of your assistance and making sure that our virtual convention went off. I um, appreciate it. Um, we talked early this morning and over the, over the week, so I just thank you for all that you have done. And uh, we look forward to continually working with you in order to make November a great day for the Democrats across North Carolina. Thank you so much. And again, thanks for allowing me this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If at this time you would show the other videos from the other uh, statewide Democratic candidates uh, yes. provided, by the, provided by the North Carolina Democratic Party. Yes, Madam Chair. Sure. Give me a quick second, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Can you see my screen, everyone? Yeah. Madam, Madam Chair, can yes. you see my screen? Okay. I'm yes. Yes. Uh huh. Hi, North Carolina Democrats. Can you hear that before I continue? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you for staying at home and thank you for attending your county Democratic Convention virtually. I know our family lives and our work lives have been turned upside down by this pandemic. And I just want you to know that I'm fighting every single day to make sure that people get the best health care possible, to slow the spread of this virus, and to try to cushion the economic blow. What you're doing now, staying home, helping each other, and supporting each other is so important. And it's a time like this that we know electing strong leaders is so important. And let me just tell you, come November the 3rd, we're going to make sure that Democrats win all the way from the courthouse to the White House. And it's because we're right. We're right on health care. We're seeing that painfully now. It would be very nice to have five to 600,000 more North Carolinians insured with Medicaid. But of course, the Republicans have continued to block that. We're right on education. We're right on clean air and water. We're right, right on fighting Jericho and over suppression. We're going to win this November if we all work hard. And it's going to happen at the county level. You can go to RoyCooper.com to find out to help, how to help our campaign. And thank you for all you're doing to elect Democrats in 2020. Go get them, everybody. And sorry we're not able to meet in person to do the COVID-19 health emergency. But even a virus can't keep hardworking Democrats from finding a creative way to meet to move North Carolina forward. I want to thank you all for a wonderful primary election. We had a great deal of candidates, and I'm honored to be your Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor. I want you to know that I'm committed to supporting the good Democratic issues of affordable health care, better public school funding, a clean environment, and restoring voting rights to name a few. I will also be championing my affordable living initiative, which fosters affordable housing, food security, living wages, and reliable transportation. Our state deserves a lieutenant governor that will work to make this the best state it can be. And we can do it. Now let's turn North Carolina into a two blue state. Everybody, this is Cal Cunningham, your Democratic nominee for the United States Senate. And like all of you, I honoring the stay-at-home order. We are practicing social distancing. We're checking in with loved ones to make sure that they're okay. I know this is an uncertain and a difficult time uh, for so many of us, but I am as confident in our future as I've ever been. Every day I'm talking to people all over North Carolina and I'm hearing amazing stories about neighbors taking care of neighbors, about the way that we're lifting up our medical professionals and our first responders. It's that spirit of unity that I think that we need to emulate in our party as we come together, not just to win elections, but to be ready to get this country and the state of North Carolina moving again and care for our people. I look forward to helping be a leader on that ticket. I look forward to partnering with you at the counties, precincts, to make sure that we have the resources we need and the strength that we need and the organization that we need to win elections this fall and do great things for North Carolina. Until I see you in person, stay well, God bless, take care.
fellow Democrats, I'm Attorney General Josh Stein, and I hope that all of you are safe and healthy. Our lives have been turned upside down for this coronavirus epidemic. Many people are sick. A few have even died. Everyone is stuck at home. A number of people have lost their jobs. In many ways, our, our lives are never going to be the same. The way that we conduct elections will be different, too. There will be fewer rallies, less door-to-door, -door, more time on phone calls, more doing social media. But what has not changed, in fact, what is even more important is the urgency with which we win these elections in November. From the president on down, federal, state, local, we have to win in November. I am thrilled to be your partner in this effort, and we will be victorious in November. Thank you. Hello, Democrats. I'm thankful for all the doctors and the nurses, the first responders, and every last person that works at the hospitals. I'm thankful for teachers and state employees who are doing their job. I'm thankful for all the citizens who are being responsible in their conduct. And I'm hopeful for those folks whose work life has been interrupted. We are all in this together. You know, the 2020 campaign is a lot like the COVID virus fight. We're all in it together. We know the game plan is to elect Biden to the presidency, Cal to the U.S. Senate, and all the rest of our federal candidates. It's to reelect Roy, and certainly to elect an awesome Council of State slate. We also need to give Roy a House and Senate that he can work with, because we're all in this together. We're working together for a North Carolina that works for everyone. We can do it. Thanks. North Carolina Democrats! I'm Sherry Beachley, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. Hello, everybody. This is Mark Davis from North Carolina Supreme Court. Hi, I'm Lucy Inman, your Democratic candidate for the open seat on the North Carolina Supreme Court. I wish I could be with you personally right now, but in these difficult times, unfortunately, that's not possible. And I know we're all trying to best navigate how COVID-19 is impacting our lives, but I first of all just want to thank you. You're the ones who people turn to when they're in the greatest need. You're not helpful just during elections, but you're helpful all the time. Now is the season for elections, and we're all best trying to determine how our elections are changing. 2020 is going to be a great year for Democrats in North Carolina, and we have such a great Supreme Court right now, but we have to keep it. Half of our court is on the ballot. The stakes are high, but together we can keep our courts free and fair. And so I am asking you to vote for me, Sherry Beasley, as Chief Justice, I'm also asking you to support Mark Davis, who serves on the Supreme Court of North Carolina, and Lucy Inman, who's also running for the Supreme Court. And please don't forget the judges. Please, please, please don't forget the judges. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Thanks so much for all you do. Hi, my name is Chris Brooke. I'm a judge on the North Carolina Court of Appeals. First and foremost, I hope that you and your families are doing as well as possible in these exceptionally trying circumstances. And thank you for everything that you do. We're fortunate to have five wonderful Democrats running for the North Carolina Court of Appeals. Trisha Shields, Grace Dyers, Judge Laura Cumbage, Judge Ruben Young, and myself all have Republican opinions. And all of us know the importance of a fair, independent judiciary that treats every North Carolinian with respect. We bring a wealth of experience to the court, and we really need your help to win in November. I'll now turn it over to Trisha Shields. Hi, I'm Trisha Shields. I am proud to be your candidate for seat four for the North Carolina Court of Appeals. I've had a 35-year active trial and appellate practice, and I look forward to putting that experience to work for the people of North Carolina. Thank you. Be safe. And I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Judge Laura Cubbage. My experience as Assistant DA and Assistant Attorney General handling workers' compensation law and arguing the criminal appeals to the Court of Appeals, as well as my service on both the district and superior court benches, make me uniquely qualified for seat number five. I humbly ask for your vote, and I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Grace Styers. My name is Grace Styers, and I've practiced law for over 30 years with cases and clients in all corners of our state. 
taught at the UNC School of Law, and served as a Bar Association president. I love North Carolina and its people, and now I want to give back to the state by serving you as a judge on the Court of Appeals. And now my friend, Judge Ruben Young. Hi, my name is Ruben Young. I'm a judge on the North Carolina Court of Appeals. I've been serving on the court since May of last year. I also serve on the court with my colleague, Judge Chris Brooker. I am honored to be a member of the slate of Democratic nominees who are seeking the election to the Court of Appeals in the November 2020 election. We are all committed to the fair disposition, justice, to independence, and to impartiality. However, we cannot win these elections without your support. So I am asking that you share our messages with members of your family, your friends, and people that are both in your personal and professional circles. I hope you have a wonderful convention. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay strong. God bless. Friends, Beth Wood, your North Carolina State Auditor here. I hope that all of you are doing well in these very trying times. I want to say thank you to all of you for helping me through the years, especially in our 2016 re-election. We're the closest race in the state and won by only 6,086 votes. But it was your efforts and hard work that made it happen. We need to continue to work hard in order to keep this critical seat. So our win in November is going to be very important. This virus has caused our economy to shudder and will affect our campaigns financially. But now more than ever, we need to make sure that every tax dollar that you send to Raleigh is being used prudently for public education, for health care for our most vulnerable, and get our state's economy back on track. We're facing some uphill battles. Our opponent is absolutely the least qualified I've ever run against, and now is not the time to give this seat up to someone who can even spell CPA. I need your help to be successful in November. Together we can do this again. God bless each and every one of you, and happy community. Hello, North Carolina Democrats. I'm Ronnie Chatterjee, your nominee to be the next state treasurer. I ran the primary as the nerd we meet, arguing that to manage our $100 billion pension fund, our state employee health plan, and all of our state and local finances, we needed a nerd when we feel numbers. But now with the coronavirus and resulting economic downturn, we need a nerd with the right skills more than ever. I served as a White House advisor to President Obama, had worked with Governor Cooper on two statewide commissions, and been an economist at Duke University for the past 14 years. I want to put what I know to work for you. But as we're working on rebuilding North Carolina, we have to keep our values in mind. After the last financial crisis, we left our education and healthcare system behind. We prioritized special interests over North Carolina families. And I'm determined that we make this recovery different. I hope you'll join me across the state during this campaign season and support me in November as we put North Carolina first. Thank you, and I hope to meet with you in person as soon as we can. Hello, North Carolina Democrats. I'm Dr. Jen Nangrum, and I'm your nominee for State Superintendent of Public Instruction. In North Carolina, all of our children have the constitutional right to a sound and basic education. And yet, the Republicans have been dismantling public education for a free market system. How are they encouraging this privatization? First, they're not paying our teachers a competitive wage, and so teachers are leaving the profession. Second, they're underfunding our schools so the schools don't have the resources, program support personnel to do their work, and families are leaving our schools. Finally, they're stigmatizing our children in schools by calling them failing, when in reality it's the Republicans that are failing our public schools. I have a different vision for North Carolina. I want to elevate those who educate. I want to invest in public education. I want to make North Carolina public schools the best choice. I'm Dr. Jen Mangrum. I hope you have your support for State Superintendent of Public Instruction. I'm Jessica Holmes, your Democratic nominee for North Carolina Commissioner of Labor. I'm an attorney with a focus on labor and employment law. I'm also someone with Joyce Boxing. So today I ask you to get in the ring with me and fight for an increase in the minimum wage. Better health care for all of us and safer working conditions for all of North Carolina's workers. If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that workers are the backbone of our society and our economy. I also ask that you join me in changing the face of every single elevator in the state of North Carolina. Thank you for being a Democrat, and thank you for making me your nominee. Hey y'all, my name is Jenna Wadsworth, and I'm our nominee for North Carolina Commissioner of Agriculture. Over the last 10 years, I've been elected
elected in Wake County as the Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor. But now I'm ready to take a fight to the state level. And we're going to start by supporting our small family farmers again and giving them economic opportunities where they can succeed, like through the legalization of cannabis. We're also going to fight climate change because I know it's real. And even though the current commissioner doesn't agree, I understand we can't just write relief checks to deal with every natural disaster. And while we're at it, we're going to bridge the urban rural divide by making meaningful investments in rural health care and in the expansion of broadband access. And last but not least, we're going to support our farm workers, the people who pick our food. I believe that they deserve a moral pathway to citizenship and that a truly great America would have already addressed the immigration issue instead of treating it like a pest problem. So if you're ready to join me, if you're ready to join this fight, visit Jenna Wadsworth. Hey everybody, I'm Wayne Goodwin, candidate for North Carolina Insurance Commissioner running for a third non-consecutive term. The insurance commissioner is responsible for consumer protection, keeping our insurance rates fair and as low as possible, and saving you money. The insurance commissioner is also the state fire marshal, essentially the state's fire chief. Did you know that on my watch, I saved North Carolina consumers $2.4 billion? I'm the only candidate in this race to have ordered $206 million in refunds directly to you and other consumers? Did you know that on my watch, I made sure that North Carolina had the lowest average car insurance premiums in the entire country, and I'm the only candidate that's focused on lowering your health insurance premiums. Finally, did you know that I'm the only candidate in this race that supports our firefighters 100% with issues such as presumptive cancer coverage, better wages for firefighters, and personal protective equipment as they battle the front lines of the coronavirus. Since I was last commissioner, your insurance costs have risen, and much of that, unfortunately, has been hidden. It's time to return to having an insurance commission that truly fights for the issues that matter most to you. I'm Wayne Goodwin asking your support and for your vote. All right, Madam Chair. Okay, Lorenzo, there was also one from Judge Tony Brown. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. I tried to prep that last night and this morning again. When I was trying to download the video, ma'am, it would not pull up. Okay. So I, it's not going to be able to be presented at this convention. Okay. Judge Tony Brown um, did contact us, and uh, he did try to prevent a, present yeah. a video that he would be able to ask for your vote for him. Um, so anyway, we will, at this time, I just want to extend to all of you good Edgecombe County Democrats, a big thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to go ahead and register and to be a part of this convention and then exercising your rights and coming in and doing what you needed to do to be a participating part of this Edgecombe County 2020 Democratic Convention. Thank you. And if there is no other business, and if it is without objection, we hereby stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. What you just witnessed is the Edgecombe County Democratic Party Convention on Zoom uh, virtual meeting. I am Camilla Stancy, Precinct 11 1, uh, Precinct Chair. And my concerns are uh, this to me was no different from what um, our chair that uh, Roosevelt Higgs that chose not to participate would have done. It was carried out basically the same. Um, the Vice Chair Martha Johnson um, did just like he would have done, handpicked the people for the um, committees and also um, called the people that she wanted to call um, to make sure that they were on the call. So again, she's no different from uh, Roosevelt. Well, we know that because she's been the Vice Chair and um, a County Chair for the last several terms and nothing has uh, come out of this party. Uh, with all her uh, time being on, 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 the, on, the, on the county uh, party. But um, I had some concerns. I had some questions that um, uh, I would have presented today. But, um, you know, as she stated, that this was only for uh, the business of the convention. So, uh, and I did not want to prolong the meeting any longer. So, uh, question number one was, who was the contact person to reach out to the Edgecombe County Democrats? And um, I'm assuming that was Martha Johnson. Were all the precincts contacted 
from what I understand, no. And by seeing who was on the call, um, where the information sent in to the state delegates entered in the system and delegated delegates contacted. I don't think that was done. Um, how were the slate of names for the six committee members obtained? I um, was on the phone with uh, Martha this morning, and she was telling me about the, uh, she had a slate of names, and um, I sent her an email and a text to ask her who were the slate of the names. She did not respond. I also uh, asked for the agenda. She did not respond in two different um, uh, mailings. Also, I contacted the state, um, Wayne Goodwin and Lorenzo Pedro, and uh, and also Don Davis, and I didn't get a copy of the agenda until we came on today. But um, with all that's been going on with the Edgecombe County Democratic Party, with the non-compliance and uh, no communications, I am requesting that the Edgecombe County Chair, Roosevelt Higgs, First Vice Chair Martha Knight Johnson, second vice appointed uh, by Roosevelt during the last convention because I was not present, uh, Gladys Shelton, and third vice chair Bronson Williams to all resign their post effective immediately so that the Edgecombe County Democratic Party uh, dedicated officers can uh, move the forward, move the party forward. Now going back to the meeting today. This was some of the craziest mess I have ever seen. But this is what you get because you have people that um, are your friends that go along just to get along and not to rock the boat. Now, anybody that know, know that all these people that she handpicked were, Martha Johnson handpicked, were the people that she wanted in place, even nominated herself. How in the hell can you do that? And then she, when I questioned it, she going to say that everybody knew. Well, it was her job when she supposed that contacted people, uh, the precinct chairs, to let them know what would take place at the convention. And did you have any names that you would like to nominate for those committees? This is just a shame. And this is why I come. We have the issues we have within the Democratic Party because you have folk like themselves that are self-centered. And, 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 and do not um, um, care about the other people that's included. And again, like I say, you have these folk that get online, attend the meetings, that go along just to get along. It's sad. Sad, sad, sad. So, um, again, this is what you got. What you continue to get as long as you keep the same people in place. Um, the only reason I'm acting in the in the party is simply because when um, something happened and it's an appointment open, say like we just uh, replaced the register these in December, um, um, we appointed a sheriff, uh, Clee Atkinson, um, uh, the register these person was, um, um, well, you don't need no names, but we, um, we appointed the sheriff um, a couple of, uh, about two years ago and, 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 and it just was crazy. Uh, we could not get any information from the party, um, Roosevelt Higgs and um, and and um, Martha Johnson had the information and would not give it out. If it had not been for the sheriff, uh, Clee Atkinson, um, running at that time for the appointment, the precincts would not have been organized. All 21 precincts were organized the year that he was appointed. So again, you know, I... It's just crazy. Um, I appreciate, um, uh, I can't think of her name right now, uh, Melanie uh, uh, Bradley for nominating me uh, for a committee. But I uh, uh, chose not to because um, I didn't want to prolong it. We would have to, she would not have backed out. So she, we would have uh, had to, um, you know, do a vote a different way. But anyway, I just want to say that, um, and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of having to deal with craziness when it comes to the Edgecombe County Democratic Party. Uh, years ago, when the uh, numbers came in from Raleigh, we could tell um, with the Edgecombe County participation that um, you know we would be successful on the state level. But now, since we have 
a bunch of craziness. Um, we, we have no meetings um, since the county convention last year. We had only one meeting, and that was to replace the um, the um, rest of these who uh, had uh, retired. So, you know, if these Edgecombe County Democrats like it, I love it. But I am going to do my part, and I am going to speak up, and I am going to speak out, and also expose craziness because um, it needs to be done. So again, uh, thank you for listening to my spin, and if you um, you can see it for yourself, and uh, you know you don't have to agree with me. I don't I don't I don't I don't say things for people to agree with me because when you're right and you know it, that's all that matters. Thank you.